so far, what we were doing with contrastive learning, with D cluster, we needed to have, actually for contrastive learning, you needed to have a lot of negative examples. And for deep cluster, you needed to know your uh, cluster centers and find them using k-means out of your features. Can you get rid of both of them? Do you really need negative examples? Are they necessary? Can you write a loss function that is gonna get rid of that? And this is really surprising that this happens, that bootstrap your own latent is gonna help you get rid of the negative examples. And why would you want to get rid of them? Because they're costly. And if you remember to reduce the cost, you were keeping a memory or a memory bank of keys, which were coming out of your examples being pushed through your model and then caching those computations or caching those vectors in your memory. So we needed to work hard to make, to make the algorithm computationally efficient. Let's see what is the idea of bootstrap your own latent. Let's see what are the ideas here. We are gonna be doing self-supervised image representation learning without negative pairs. We are getting rid of the negative pairs. And in the end of the day, with representation learning, with self-supervised learning, you want to learn a function that you apply it on an image and it's gonna give you good representations which you're gonna be using in some downstream tasks. You're gonna be doing transfer learning. You have an input image, you still augment it in two different fashions and it's gonna give you two different views. You push those views in through two neural networks, which are gonna give you your representations, F theta and FQC here. That's gonna give you these two Y vectors. You take the representations, you project them. This is exactly what you are doing with contrastive learning as well. There is an additional neural network here whose job is to predict the representations coming out of a target. And then you are doing stop gradient here. And this way you're bootstrapping your own latent. That was the big picture in terms of more details. F theta, you can call it your encoder. G theta is your projection network or projector. Q is a predictor. This is the additional stuff compared to uh, contrastive learning. So you have an additional neural network. Thetas are gonna be trained. Qc, which are the parameters of your target network, they are an exponential moving average of your thetas. So they are lagged behind your thetas. You have a data set of images, no labels. You sample an image from your data. You have two different transformations. You get two different views using those two transformations, those two data augmentation strategies. And then uh, you take V, you push it through your neural network. That's gonna give you the representation. And then you project it. Those are gonna give you your Zs. You do the same thing with your target. That's gonna give you your target Zs, which you want to predict. And Q is gonna take Z theta as an input. And its job is to predict the latent. So it's predicting its own latent. You can think of it as autoencoder or encoder decoder architecture. This is the decoder, but you're doing it in the latent space rather than the image space. You're encoding some information and then your decoder needs to say what was the encoded information. To write down the loss, we are gonna normalize, well, to normalize, divide both the target and the prediction by their corresponding L2 norm. And this is a nice property that I want you guys to take home. This is a simple arithmetic, but it's really useful. If you want to minimize the L2 distance between two normalized vectors, if you want to minimize this, it is equivalent to maximizing the cosine similarity. This is true for normalized vectors. There is some constant here and there, which they don't really matter when it comes to optimization, because you're looking for the arg max, not the maximum value of your function. You're looking for the maximum argument. And this is just because the norm of the first entry is one, the norm of the second entry is one, and that's gonna give you this two here, and the other one is the dot product of these two. You are normalized, Q here is unnormalized, but actually if you divide it by its norm, it's gonna give you the normalized vector. So maximizing the cosine similarity is similar to minimizing the L2 distance. We are gonna revisit this again. 
and then you symmetrize your loss function because now things are asymmetric. There's a predictor network on top of V. You could have your predictor network on top of V prime and then predict the latent from the other model. Okay, this is surprising why this works because when you want to learn and even a human being when they want to learn if you show them only their success cases and they don't make any mistakes and they don't know that they are making mistakes there is not going to be any learning happening for contrastive learning you are contrasting to some mistakes and contrastive learning the way that it is set up is going to help you get out of uh, trivial solutions like constant solutions but when you are doing you're predicting the latent, the constant is a solution, or there could be multiple other trivial solutions or collapsed solutions. For instance, one of them is outputting the same vector for all images. And if you're outputting the same vector for all images, you are not depending on the input image. It means that you are not featureizing the input image. These are really bad features. It is still a surprise. There is no, uh, not much justification for why this works, not much mathematical justification. There are some hypotheses in the paper that the combination of having this prediction network, as well as having this slow moving average of the online parameters is helping you get out of uh, trivial solutions. Another hypothesis could be because you're using CNNs here and CNNs have some inductive bias in them already. A nice question is what happens if you change the architecture to perhaps vision transformers? Are we gonna get the same result? And there are actually some papers that show it actually happens. You are gonna get good features out of them. So it is really surprising that this is happening. You don't end up with collapse solutions. But anyways, so as I mentioned, it's a combination of having a predictor and a slow moving average. And it turns out that this is slow moving average is also not necessary. We are going to see that in the next paper. So maybe this prediction network is doing some magic. And it's one of the best methods. And it's closing the gap to a very large extent to supervise learning, especially for larger models. And it's doing better than Sinclair, uh, MoCo, CMC we covered, contrastive multi-view coding, CPC we covered, contrastive predictive coding. It's doing better than all of them. Any questions? about bootstrap your own latent. Professor, I had a question. So just to be clear, the back propagation is happening only for the online network, right? Yes. So the only parameters that are changing are thetas. Qc is a moving average of your thetas. I see. So first we back propagate and uh, the, the, the new parameters, we use that for the moving average of target network. Yes, that's correct. It's, it's a bit weird how that works. Yeah, and without any negative examples. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's that's. It's impressive. Any other questions? Awesome.